With an amazing choice of different models on the market to date, there's never been a better time to get behind the wheel of an electric car. And while we'd personally like to see more affordable electric car models in the mix, especially in North America, where many of the more budget-friendly models found in Europe just aren't on sale, it's nice to see more than just one or two different vehicles to choose from. While the choice of different EVs today is great to see, the Achilles heel of EVs has long been public charging infrastructure, namely fast charging, and the reliability of the same. Historically, there's been a handful of different fast charging standards in use around the world. CCS Type 1 and Type 2, which version you get depends on where you live in the world, Chidemo, a standard that's rapidly becoming obsolete everywhere except Japan, GB slash T in China, and Tesla's supercharger inlet, aka NAX, or North American Charging Standard. To date, the latter has been exclusively used by Tesla for Tesla, but that's about to change with the news from late last month that Ford will be adding NACS to its electric vehicles from 2025 model year cars onwards. I know that I and the rest of the team have been running around doing other things for a few weeks and we've wanted to do a video on this for a while, but only when we knew a little more. Now we've had a chance to dig around a little, it's time to talk about it. A few weeks ago, Ford surprised us all by announcing that all of its electric vehicles from 2025 model years onwards would include Tesla's NAX, North American Charging Standard. Shortly afterwards, we learned that Tesla would be designing a special adapter for existing Ford EVs that would make it possible for CCS-based Ford EVs to use existing North American V3 superchargers without requiring Tesla's magic dock. Today, I'm going to explain what to expect as these changes roll out, throw in some rumours that I've heard about the change, and explain why I think Ford will not completely abandon CCS in the process. And, because NAX isn't global, it's worth noting that for customers in markets where Tesla uses CCS Type 2 charging inlets as its de facto for cars and superchargers, uh, this particular video might seem less useful. But I think the new announcement will have some knock-on implications for Ford customers in those markets too. First, let's get stuck in with some history. When Tesla first revealed its supercharger network for Model S back in 2012, it quickly became the EV world's most reliable charging standard. It was quick, it was reliable, and while Technically, CCS was first in terms of establishing a standard. Tesla didn't take long to outperform CCS and Chidemo deployment. Anyone who has used a Tesla will be able to tell you the other benefits to superchargers, like the ability to handle payments seamlessly for charging sessions without those pesky RFID tags or smartphone apps, not to mention in-car navigation systems that precondition your battery pack to optimum fast charging temperatures to reduce the amount of time at every supercharger. That is, as long as the car knows, you're going to one, of course. Shortly after it was launched, Tesla offered its supercharger technology and network to rival companies in the now famous All Our Patents Are Belong To You blog post. But that also included some complex legal requirements, such as agreeing not to sue rival companies for patent infringement of any EV technology, which I'm going to assume made it something automakers didn't want to touch. But now, well, things are different. And while Tesla hasn't detailed the specifics, we can make some educated guesses. Let's look at the why. For about a year now, Ford has been operating a group inside Model E, its electric vehicle arm, called the Charge Angels. Their single job has been to travel North America using public charging infrastructure and determining where things are good and where things are bad. And as anyone who has used a public non-Tesla charging network will tell you, sometimes, very often, things aren't great. I like to personally think I've done more miles than the average person long distance in an EV, and I've generally been able to find charging on the road without too many problems. 
Sure, I have encountered Electrify America charging sites where there's only one functional charging station and there's been a queue to use it, but save for that one time when I arrived at a charging station with an almost flat battery and it was offline for construction work and I'd not bothered to actually check it was working before I got there, I've not ended up in a pickle. Not everyone has been so lucky. There have been some pretty terrifying horror stories out there about slow charging speeds, broken hardware and issues with payments, all of which, by the way, I've encountered in one way or another but been able to solve. I would hazard a guess that the Ford Charge Angels have had that same experience and I'm guessing the data didn't look good for Ford. After all, if you are shifting your entire business over to electric vehicles, or at least claiming you want to, you've got to have a way to reliably charge customers' cars, and some networks don't seem all that invested in reliability. Instead, they seem more focused on cashing in on government grants. I know at this point that some people will be screaming at the screen saying it's the fault of CCS, which... Honestly, it isn't. CCS, the physical connector, is just that, a physical connector, and communications between charging stations and cars are carried out using a whole slew of different standards. If you want to know just how complicated it is, check out this video we did on how CCS works with Jeremy from EVgo. No, the problem is more complicated. It's the problem of multiple engineers working on slightly different interpretations of just one not very well written standard, and there being something of a nebulous mess in the middle. If Tesla's supercharger network is like joining the Borg hive mind, or maybe witnessing a pair of binars finish each other's sentences, then using CCS is sometimes, well, Coltar when he drowned in the swamp. Or to put it another way, you're rolling in combat with a disadvantage and temporary lowered AC. Ford, which has seen the ease at which Tesla operates its network, and I'm guessing has come to a partnership deal with Tesla that revolves around a few different areas, means that Ford is going to implement a NAX port on future vehicles, and it's either licensing Tesla's software communications in order to allow its vehicles to talk to Tesla's charging stations, or and this is also a strong contender, is just going to continue using a tweaked version of CCS for the back end. Because while Tesla's previous opening up of NAX included physical port dimensions, there wasn't, at least initially, much in the way of deep dive details on the communication protocols used. In fact, that early documentation basically just says, for communication, use CCS. Ford is also going to work with Tesla to implement plug and charge payment with all of its superchargers so that Ford customers, who are set up with the Blue Oval Charge Network, can rock up at a Tesla supercharger and pay for their charging in the same way that they can for other plug and charge compatible charging stations, along with a, a premium for doing so. And I'm guessing that the prices Ford and Tesla have agreed on for supercharger access will be higher than those charged by Tesla for its customers' vehicles, which would give Tesla a little boost in profits to enable it to expand its network and whatever else it wants to do with the stations. Tesla has long maintained it doesn't want to make a profit from charging, and we can assume that is how it's going to continue. We have the why. So now let's look at what I can glean from the how. At this point, it's worth noting that there's a huge number of hushed rumours flying around as to what exactly we'll see from Ford, and Ford, officially at least, isn't letting much information out. I've reached out to my contacts at Ford, and if you'll allow me to paraphrase, their responses are basically... We're not discussing the details at this time. Thanks. This suggests several things. First, Ford hasn't yet inked the final deal with Tesla and things will likely change behind the scenes. Earlier this week, Tesla hinted that it would be open to selling its other technologies to automakers too, like Autopilot, so it does appear that Tesla is certainly ready to see its technology sold to those willing to pay, cementing its position at the top of EV charts, even if other automakers say they want to beat Tesla on actual vehicle volumes. You'll note, too, that there's been no official confirmation from Ford that it is, in fact, dumping CCS. And the whispers on the grapevine I've heard suggest that it's not in Ford's paybook. 
Instead, the rumors suggest Ford might be open to keeping both systems operating on its vehicles, for a while at least. And some vehicles, like the F-150 Lightning, would make that really easy. The first reason for this is surrounding Ford's home integration system. I suspect if Ford abandons CCS completely, many who have paid to have the Ford home integration system and its backup power capabilities added to their home hi, would be very upset if their next electric Ford didn't have compatibility with it, especially given that's $10,000 or more that they've spent putting the system on their home. In fact, it's conceivable that eventually Nex will have official V2G capability or perhaps that aftermarket retrofits for existing customers will be available in case they want to upgrade their vehicle. But given I've heard rumours suggesting Ford was considering V2G for other vehicles in its lineup outside of the F-150 Lightning, like the Mustang Mark E, it is a question we need an answer to that Ford isn't yet prepared to offer. Refer to my original statement about the final agreement not being inked yet. Second, keeping CCS around, even if it's in the form of an adapter, makes it possible for Ford's customers to use whatever charging station is most convenient for them, wherever they are. This is super important because the charging station you're nearest to might not always be a Tesla supercharger. And in order to make EVs appealing to gasoline holdouts, you need charging station compatibility that will just work wherever you happen to be. Moreover, I don't think anyone in this industry expects or wants to see a monopoly of charging stations for NAX, certainly not in the immediate future. In order for it to be really, truly adopted and for everyone to benefit from the quote unquote Tesla charging experience, every charging provider needs to get on board. Something that is particularly difficult right now as many other legacy manufacturers have started pushing V to G and V to H or V to X, something that at the moment in the next spec purely exists as quote, eh, but should be able to do this. Which brings me to my closing thoughts. We know Ford and Tesla plan to work together on a CCS adapter for Tesla superchargers for North America and Ford vehicles. And I fully expect there to be a retrofit option for Ford EVs down the line, not necessarily from Ford, but from third party companies for customers who just want to get rid of CCS completely. While Tesla's experience to date has been pretty seamless for Tesla owners, however, opening up the supercharger network to non-Teslas in other parts of the world has proven that things do go wrong. We've heard horror stories of non-Teslas not properly charging or communicating with Tesla CCS magic docks in North America and the failing of CCS vehicles trying to charge at CCS compatible Tesla superchargers in Europe. All of them come from a single designed and built network interacting with vehicles it had no part or control in building and the communication issues that result from different interpretations of the CCS standard. If other networks and automakers jump on board and the effect is a diversification of charging station choice, not the establishment of a single mighty charging station monopoly, then we have a really rosy future ahead of us, especially as just as there are those of us who do not want to give money to companies like Exxon or Shell because of past environmental disasters and the actions of each individual company, there are those of us watching who will undoubtedly not want to give money to Tesla because of recent things Elon Musk has said and or done. And while I was told recently by another YouTuber in this sector that I and we should collaboratively ignore what Elon Musk says and focus on the things he's helped bring to the EV and tech world, there are also those of us who are now directly living in a world he's helped make worse by attacking who we are, who we love, or those that are near and dear to us. Essentially, in a world of consumer choice, it is down to the individual to choose where and when to spend their money and who ends up getting their support. 
And while for Ford customers this change massively increases the number of charging stations available, this move does little to stabilise the charging standards war that's raging in the US. Unlike other countries with significant EV adoption, most of which have mandated a standardisation on a single rapid charging connector, the US continues to allow manufacturers to call the shots and whoever wins this particular battle is going to leave a lot of other people frustrated and left out in the cold, especially in the used EV market, which I find most irksome. Finally, don't expect this to be plain sailing. Ford is a big company with a lot of clout, and so is Tesla. Just like any marriage, there are bound to be bumpy roads ahead, and frankly, we'd all be kidding ourselves if we thought otherwise. And on that note, we are done with today's video. If you have comments, leave them below. Drop us a polite note in the Discord chat room. You can leave them on Mastodon or if you're a Patreon supporter in the comments there. If you want more, subscribe, hit the bell and follow the links below to regularly support us with a YouTube membership or a Patreon subscription. We're now offering Patreon trials. You'll also find links below to our Kofi, Bitcoin and Swag store, as well as that aforementioned Mastodon server. Scrolling on my right is a list of amazing charged up supporters and shout outs go out to our V2G Patreon supporters. They are Alan Tupper, Andrew Martin, Bennett Elder, Brophy Wolf, Chris Maxwell, Cyprian Laplace, Dan Blair, Gordon C, Hey Esker, John Trammell, Kyle Fox, Mark Eggleton, Peter Dillinger, Ray Jean Fellows, Sean Tucker, Stefan Fremgen, Stephen Williams, Tazlet in the Gong, Paul Bricknell, Tony Moss, Kyle Hodgson, Chris Centaur, Denny Hyde, Lanch Schlal, Linda Irish, Mike Weeder, and Paul Nelson. And finally, big thanks to our off grid supporters. They are Paul Conway, Kevin Burbridge, Stephen O'Donoghue, Jim Benes, Robert Flannery, Aaron Hahn, Ellery Hansley, Rory Litwin, JP Fagerback, Dave Kitchen, Andrew Glenn, Anonymous Freak, Chris and Michael Johnson, Clay Witt, CPU Freak 101, Eric Knack, Joe Bresney, Joe Hughes, John Henderson, Laura Reynolds, Marcel Ward, Matthew Drobnak, Nigel S, Reggie Watts, Will Graylin, and of course, Ian. Don't forget that we make videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday on this channel, plus over on Sunday on Take Two for our Chicken and Garden and Sunday Musing. And with that, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you soon. And as always, keep evolving. This is the first time I've recorded a non-10 in the studio now for about three weeks. And I would love to give you a different classic mech, but no, the G4 tower is still here. Frankly, at the weekend, instead of working on classic Max as I did through the winter, I've been out in the garden doing gardening and I'm working on the yard. So this has pretty much stayed here and done nothing. I know that some of you want to donate your old retro Max to the channel. So if you want to do that, reach out either in the comments below or drop us a line by going to our website at transportevolve.com and dropping us a line there. I love it to hear from you. See you soon.